the Braves infielder Whit Merrifield was frustrated after getting hit by in the head by a 95 mile per hour fastball yesterday and took shots at certain pitchers. He says there's no remorse for pitchers continuing to throw hard fastballs high and inside to hitters. He added that he hates how pitchers just try to throw close to 100 miles per hour with no control or location and says it's bad for baseball. He referenced several of the other Braves injuries that have come through hit by pitches, uh, including Travis Darno and Austin Riley. He, he referenced how the pitchers who hit him wasn't responsible for his actions, but he had to get a CAT scan after the game after getting hit in the head and neck. Merrifield is one of the veteran players that that is on. I'm sorry, that is on the MLBPA's rules of committee. I listen. I I don't think he's wrong. I don't think he's wrong. And I, here's the problem. In years and years ago, okay, if you were throwing 95, 96, you're throwing hard. Now, if you don't throw 98. You're not even making a major league team. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, if you're a relief pitcher, you should be throwing 98, 99. It's it's incredible how the how hard these guys are throwing. There's a guy in the major leagues that hit 104. Yep. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. Carlos Chapman hit 106 his rookie year, and so did uh, Jordano Ventura. I mean, I saw a college player throw 109 uh, that was recorded at a batting uh, at a batting uh, cage or whatever the hell it was. He was throwing 108, 109. I think that baseball needs to figure out how to protect these players. I really do, and I I know the helmets. I mean, David Wright brought. Him and uh, Giancarlo Stanton created like that, those helmets yeah. to protect their heads, but it's really not protecting anything. I mean, these balls are coming out fast out of the hands, and it's dangerous. These balls are small, and they're coming lightning fast. I mean, just think. I don't know if anybody watches a hockey game. A puck is iced. They ice a puck before they put it on the rink, okay? I, so I, I don't know if anybody's been hit by a 100-mile-per-hour puck, but I do remember one time I was playing in net, and my cup flipped and somebody shot the puck and it was definitely going over hundred miles per hour because I saw birdies flying over my head when it hit me square in the, you know, the private area. Damn. Okay. I had tests over there. I, I dude, my, my nutsack was the size of grapefruits for like a week. Okay. I iced it. I couldn't even walk straight. All right. So it is dangerous. And that's that's coming from not even a professional hockey player. I mean, Al McGinnis was shooting 109, 108 mile per hour slap shots at the the All Star game. I mean, it, it is ridiculous how hard and how fast these guys are throwing. It is dangerous, and baseball needs to figure that out. Now they they're figuring out how to bring in these like, uh, you know, there's a pitching clock, there's robots now. I mean, in the minor leagues, they're gonna they're 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 gonna try to find ways to change this game for. For, for some reason, but these players are especially superstar players like Aaron Judge, Otani, all these other guys that are making millions and millions of dollars. This is why fannies are coming and, and, and lighting up those seats to come and watch the superstar players. If these guys go down, if these guys get hit, look, that ball hitting David Wright in the head, he was never the same. Yeah. He was never the same. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's it's kind of scary. It is. It's kind of scary. And it, and and I will say this. Whit Merrifield is not wrong. He's not wrong. And baseball, if they're going to find ways that they're going to speed up the game and, and make the game faster and better and more offense, they need to find a way to protect the players that are making millions and millions of dollars and reasons why the play, you know, why the, the fans are coming to see those games. Right. And he's a hitter too. That is not somebody that crowds the plate, not somebody that's going to crouch over. Like he's always been pretty normal when it comes to be a steady contact here when he was with the Royals an all-star caliber player in that regard. So it's not like he's the one leaning in and crowding the plate where guys can get hit. We, there are hitters like that throughout their careers, but he, 
he's right in the fact that there's tendencies of different teams to do that as well. I think the Pirates, when they were on their little playoff streak, the years after that, they a lot of teams accused them of throwing up and in way too much. And the Mets had a run with that too, with Syndergaard and Harvey for a little while too, that they were crowding, they were crowding the plate with those up and in fastballs when they had the velocity. And sometimes when you have the velocity, it can obviously it can be used as a luxury, but you can also be, get these types of fiery types of players towards you. And for a hitter that's going to fire back at that kind of thing and benches clearing brawls and all that kind of things, you can get that kind of reputation again. And he's right. If you can't control a hundred mile an hour fastball, like you shouldn't be throwing it as often as you can. And it's going to be part of the game. It's going to be part of, it's going to be part of, like you said, velocity player development. But if you can't control it, why are you throwing it at all? All right, fish, your opinion to uh, Mr. Merrifield. You got to be concerned about it. Bryce Harper got hit tonight and was taken out of the game. It, the best players in the league, you do not want to see get hurt this way. It's it's a problem. You don't want to have the stars go down and then the product being a bunch of guys you never heard of by the time we get to late August and early September. Because if you look at some of these rosters, even before they expanded them, it, I, I haven't. there's like a whole bunch of guys that aren't major leaguers playing in the major leagues because there's a lot of guys that are hurt generally – but we're adding more to the injured list because of laziness from, you know, like organizations. Let's just get a bunch of guys lifting weights and throwing harder than possible instead of teaching them the art of oh, pitching. And I and I would argue it's the art. Yeah, Syndergaard's a great example, uh, Speedy. That guy learned how to pitch after he had no stuff left because he blew out his arm too many times. And that's the problem. I remember uh, as a kid, Maddox was just mesmerizing to me because – I got to see him. I know he threw around 95 when he first came up with the Cubs. Uh, and, and but he was wild and he wasn't a he wasn't he was uneven. He had a great year, but he was an uneven pitcher there. And then he lost a little bit of velocity when he got to the Braves, probably intentionally, and became just this masterful painting the corners off speed. They call it a Maddox today when you get a complete game with a shutout with under uh, 100 pitches. And he I think all he's the, time. the greatest pitcher of this era. I, I think him and I, I would argue him and Roger Clemens are the two greatest pitchers of this era. Roger it was Clemens an art. Power and, and Greg Maddox because of his ability to change speeds and, and, yeah. and control the corners. And he was so accurate. Pinpoint accuracy. I've never seen anybody have pinpoint accuracy like him. Tom Glavin was pretty good, too. On the same team. You know, they learned from each other and, and Smoltz, Smoltz to that extent as well. It, uh, I, the other name I would mention is Danny Pedro. Nagel. And yeah, Nagel for a little while there was really, really good. I think he got hurt. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Pedro and Clemens, you mentioned, both threw up and in. But they did it w and to send a message be as part of their craft, as a weapon to use in their arsenal. Not like, you know, I, people hated pe playing as Randy Johnson back in the day because he didn't know where the ball was going. And that's the same thing that Merrifield was saying in this quote. I watched the video when we when we talked about it, Speedy, and it was just him saying, like, these guys, they're just bringing them up so early in their development because they throw gas. And they're not even trying to teach them how to do this, you know, the breaking ball. They have two pitches, and they throw, you know, five, not even five innings. And this is why they're talking about th crazy ideas like we talked about a few weeks back where they got to throw at least six innings or, you know, it's yeah. not allowed. Uh, or you lose your DH or you, or some kind of penalty because we got to stop all these injuries. Well, it's not uh, something they should change the game to do. They need to go after these organizations that are not teaching people how to pitch. They're just trying to use these arms, use them up. Yes, uh, what, what you mentioned, you're Donald Ventura. Where is he now? Because I don't remember him after away. a year he or two. passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I'm sorry. That's a bad, bad example. No, yeah, well, <laughs> sorry about that. He, he got hit by a pitch. But, but there, I, I, I was trying to. Well, I, I hope not. But that's what that's what Merrifield's saying is before it gets too late, someone's going to get hurt because of this wild stuff in a way that they don't come back from, or it's a traumatic brain injury. And I, I apologize to the Brentera family, but I, I'll, I'll say this: it, it's really important that this game does not have unnecessarily unnecessary bad injuries, especially, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a key player or not who gets a bad injury, but for the future of the game, it can't be to a key player. It can't be to an Aaron judge. It can't be to one of these guys or this game. They, they're trying to make it more likable for the younger audience. They're just going to go away. 
And Fish, you mentioned like, to be. Like, like too, like learn how to pitch. Like that's the North thing with Norm with Syndergaard. He had five pitches, and like he threw only two of them. Like he had a ninety-five mile an hour changeup his rookie year, and two types of fastballs and breaking pitches, and he would only throw like two or two of them a game. All right, uh, let's let's hear Tommy's thoughts, and then uh, we'll finish up with the uh, the Lindor story, and then uh, we'll go because we got something tomorrow. This is a long show, and I want to jump off a plane. Uh, so just going off real quick about what Fisher's saying and everything, and I want to really also like stress it, especially about injuring other players. You know, you have to be very smart with this. You have to be very precise with your pitches. And of course, it's right for Merrifield to get, you know, upset in this sense because you know this is someone that's a directly involved he's not like a catcher that's not getting hit by a pitch or he's not another pitcher himself that's calling it out you know he's directly involved at these hits and like fish said it's so easy for a star to get hit for him to get down i mean in every one of the sports that we play every sport that we cover and everything it's common courtesy not to try to injure the other player whether they're a rival whether they said something <laughs> about your feet smelling bad or whatever you know nobody Nobody should want, it's common courtesy, nobody should want to injure the other player in that sense. But, you know, we have seen this, we have seen the, like Speedy mentioned real quick, we have seen when people actually start to clear benches, we have seen all that happen. It's just, it's not correct. It's not right for the game of baseball. And, you know, you've got to have, like you said, Merrifield is actually correct in this sense, because, you know, he, like I said, he's the one that's directly involved with it. So him actually calling it out, and he's doing it in a very professional manner too. He's not straight up just cursing everybody out or whatnot. He's just voicing how upset, how upset he is. So. Maybe I should reach out to him. I'll teach him. <laughs> oh, hey, I can do it for him. I've got a lot of cursing. You could even a lot. You could even polish the balls. I, Why not, right? Listen, Speedy's very good at that. Right, Speedy? <laughs> no, I'm not the one that's involved in juicing the balls. That's uh, <laughs> I didn't even say juice. I, I didn't said say polish. I said polish. It's different. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll leave it to the uh the uh, baseball front office, whatever they whatever new substance they want to put on there. Yeah, well, if uh, you have the substance, it's not me. I'll I'm not the in the baseball team. league office. Well, let's let's hook you up with Theo Epstein. What do you think? I wouldn't be here if I was in the baseball league office. Uh, would you be with the baseball league office? Would you be with it? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just asking you. You like baseballs, right? Yeah. Are your baseballs bigger than basketballs? I said, are your baseballs bigger than basketballs? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay, I'm just asking. I might be losing my voice, so you might be leading us tomorrow. Are you scared? I'm just confused. Confused about what? Baseballs and basketballs size. Well, I mean, do you have basketballs? Or what baseballs? is this, an office hoop basketball? <laughs> That's the only thing that might be smaller than a baseball. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, Ron Darling told MLB Network that he believes Francisco Lindor deserves the National League MVP over Shea Otani if the Mets make the playoffs. He referenced that Lindor's leadership with a lot of the Mets' young players and says he is a perfect leadoff hitter in today's baseball. He also referenced him playing shortstop compared to Otani being a designated hitter and playing almost every game this season at the premium position. He added that Otani's playing with Freddie Freeman, Buki Betts should downgrade his MVP status. Otani is hitting 292, 44 home runs, 99 RBIs, 46 stolen bases, and in 995 OPS. Lindor is let is hitting 273, 30 home runs, 84 RBIs, 26 stolen bases, and in 843 OPS. The Mets have won six games in a row and are just a half a game back from the Braves for the last playoff spot in the National League. Oh, man, that was a lot of stuff. A lot of numbers, Speedy. Thank you. I might even choke on it. Is that okay with you? I would hope not. What, choking on numbers? I, I want to encourage you to choke. What would you rather me choke on? Nothing. I'm just asking you. I mean, choke on numbers or choke on something else? It doesn't matter, or you don't care. I don't. I don't, don't want you to choke. Okay. Okay. Because you don't want me. To, you. You don't want to lead tomorrow, right? Is that what? That it has means? nothing to do with anything. What is it? What does it mean? Because I care about you as a person. Oh, you care about me. I like that. All right. So much. I wouldn't want you to choke. You want me to? You want me to stay outside of the closet, right? I would want you to stay anywhere you where you're not going to choke. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Let, let let's uh, let's finish up with Ron Darling. Ron Darling is on drugs, okay? Ron Darling needs to stop playing with his hammy in his pants. 
Because if he really thinks that 273, 30 home runs and 84 RBIs and 26 stolen bases with an 843 over 292, 44 home runs, 99 RBIs and 46 stolen bases and a 995 has better numbers, he obviously doesn't know the game of baseball. Now, he was a pitcher, successful as a major league player, we think, uh, and he did win a World Series with the Mets. Uh, my problem here with uh, the whole thought of comparing Lindor's season to Otani is it's uncomparable. It's not comparable. I don't care if Mookie Betts is on the team. And by the way, Mookie Betts missed half the season. The guy hasn't been healthy all season long. And Freddie Freeman is a shell of himself. Freddie Freeman is not Freddie Freeman from the Atlanta Braves. So I, I do not know. And I'm I'm sticking up for Otani. I can't stand the guy. Okay? I know he's a cheater. I know he bet on baseball. Okay? But the truth is, when you look at these numbers, the only person that would beat him out for an MVP is Aaron Judge. He's the only one. There is nobody else in my point of view that's anywhere close to Otani but Aaron Judge. It's a fact. And the fact that Ron Darling believes that Lindor should be in this, you know, this race is ridiculous. There is no, and I'm not saying Lindor is not having a good year. He's having a good year. I, I have to give him a lot of credit. I, I, he is the Carlos Beltran of the Mets right now in this, in this era, because the Mets are never going to win. And he's going to put up numbers like this. And he continues to put numbers like this. He's going to go down as one of the greatest Mets of all time. That's never won. And, and that's the problem with the Mets. They haven't won since 86. And Met fans are going to sit here and cry about this and cry about that. And making the playoffs is good enough. Making the playoffs is not good enough. As a Yankee fan, the Yankees can make the playoffs every single year. If they're not playing in the World Series, nobody gives a crap. And I'm one of those Yankee fans that would tell you that. So I will say this for Ron Darling. Whatever you're drinking, maybe you're hanging out with Keith Hernandez. Maybe you're sniffing a couple lines. I don't know what the hell you're doing. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it because – it does not make any sense whatsoever in comparing Otani's numbers to Lindor's numbers. They're not comparable. No chance in hell. And uh, may God rest your soul. Okay? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I, I know in a lot of MVP races, it, if it's tight with the DH and an everyday player, or a shortstop, a center fielder, guy, somebody that's at a premier position, yeah, you would take that kind of argument. That's why I thought uh, Mookie Betts should have won MVP over J.D. Martinez when they were both on the Red Sox together in 2018 because Mookie Betts had similar numbers and did a lot more, even though Martinez had more of the power. Otani is having on pace for a 50-50 season, which regardless of what position you are, that I know it's easier today's rules to the bases are fair, but that's still very hard to do. That's a very unattainable stat in general in MLB history. And you're going to downplay it because he's a, he's a DH and he doesn't play the field. I mean, that he's having 44 home runs, 46 stolen bases, hitting almost 300. The doctors have had tons of injuries all year. So it's a, Freddie, like you said, Betts has been hurt. Freeman was hurt at certain points at the beginning of the season. The pitching's all hurt. Like he's a carrying the Dodgers in a lot of ways this year. Who has the best record right now uh, or the second best record right now in the national league? The Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not like the, t the teams they're fighting with, the Phillies, the Diamondbacks, like they have much more depth on their current team when uh, the Dodgers are hurt right now, but when they're healthy, maybe it's different, but they've had most of their guys healthy throughout the year. The Dodgers are being carried by Otani in war and wins above in, in value that Lindor is definitely bringing to the Mets, but not in the same way and not anywhere close when it comes to the traditional stats either. So yeah, I, I, as much as I support Ron Darling, I like his analysis for a lot of things he does with the Mets in the broadcast booth. Yeah. I can't agree with him on this one. Maybe he should go out drinking with you. Who do you think would drink more? You or him? I have no idea. I think it would be you. I, have no idea. I think it would be you. I'm giving you a compliment. You're a skinny little body. I mean, I've seen you drink and I've seen you throw up a lot too. Oh my God. Ah, wash it away, baby. Wash it away. Speedy. You know how to let it go. Sure. You do, right? Whatever. Have you ever thrown up more than the times that we hung out? Yeah. Really? I think everyone has. So you've thrown up. No, I'm saying the the way you threw up both times. You're going to tell me. Oh, you, you mean up. suddenly? Yes. Uh, Like once. Once or twice. Get the hell out of here, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever you ate for the three or four days, I mean, it all came out. That thing just completely yeah. combusted. I mean, I mean, I couldn't even stop you. I tried to. Yeah, I know. I did. I tried. A little water. You were dehydrated. Maybe you needed a spanking. 
Oh, oh God. That would make it worse. Why? Spanking. I don't need somebody striking me while I'm having issues with my... Nostril. I mean, if, if, you, if you were bending over... That would make it worse. How would it make it worse? Because it'll come out faster. That's even better. The faster, the better. I do get it. I don't think you get it. The faster, the better. The quicker, the more. No. It, 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 it's, it just unleashes, you know? No. No, you don't like unleashing. No. Why? I don't really like thing. Thing what? What thing? Concept. Oh, well, it's not a concept. It it's is. A it's a thing. Whatever. Growing Doesn't... up is a thing. Yeah, I know. But why would I, why would I want it to happen that quickly compared to, like, not at all. You okay? I don't know. You don't know. Do you want me to tell you if you're okay? Or no, not? you're not. No. I don't know. You don't know. I feel you. You. Know. I feel you. you don't. Like I feel you. you. Don't. I feel that you power don't. in you. you don't. It's driving you don't. through my heart right now. You don't. I am. I am hurt right now because you say I don't feel what you feel. Yeah. You don't. You hurt my feelings. I'm upset. All right, fish. I'd like to hear you and scoops, and then I'd say sayonara and. Uh, uh, may God rest your soul. Okay. Speedy, is God rest your soul? What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. You look like Jesus Christ. What are you talking about? That doesn't correlate. What correlates for you? Something that actually connects two and two together. A donkey and a horse. What would you like? Not All right. Why not? I don't care about lifestyle. What lifestyle? I asked you. Horse riding. <laughs> I just, or like any type of farm culture. I'm not involved in any. You don't like farms. I don't care. You're about against it. farms? No. They can, they, no. Would you ride a sheep? Oh my God. How about a goat? Just because I wouldn't care about something like that does not Would you, you shave that a advocate sheep? Advocate against people that do. Would you shave a sheep? No. Why not? Because then they would be cold. <laughs> what? What's your least favorite part of farm culture? I wouldn't want to be involved in all the maintenance involved in that. Yeah, because he doesn't like maintenance because he doesn't, you know, like to shave anything. What's that thing to do with shaving? You just said you don't like to maintenance. You did that. Did you not say that? The maintenance of farm culture. I was answering Fish's question. But what about my question? Fish's question was actually reasonable. So what's wrong with my question? You're doing a very rare scenario of shaving a sheep. And shaving a Who sheep? thinks that? I do. Yeah, because you're, like like Pete was saying, you always have to take it to, to another level. Well, levels are, you know, all the way to the top, as you know, Speedy. No, that's your that's your area of expertise. Well, going to the top? Taking it to other levels. Do you like taking it down or to the top? Doesn't matter. I'm asking you. Down? It doesn't matter. You got to pick one or the other. I don't care. Quick, quick, hurry up, hurry up. Up or down? Up. Whatever. All right, I figured. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I guess I guess we should try to get back to Lindor real quick uh, and Darling's yeah, idea real try. quick. Let's do that so we get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, I I'm gonna play devil's advocate because I think it's crazy to not get, make the fifty fifty guy going into playoffs uh, for sure the MVP. Uh, but here's a, an argument Darling could uh, make, and it's the war argument where Lindor actually is higher than Otani, but of course it's because of the defense, defense. right? And it, that that's the argument, that if you don't play the field, you have an automatic negative on you. And you can see next to Otani's stats, he's actually ranked seventh this year. And Judge is barely leading Bobby Witt Jr., uh, according to these metrics, because Judge hasn't been as good in the field, again, playing center field very often. That foot is a coming that is a problem coming up in his range as a defensive player. He should be playing right field. That is something that will have to be addressed later on. Now that he's a little limited defensively, not bad, obviously, but still a little limited. But he doesn't play in the field. It's because he's not pitching this year. If he was pitching this year, he might have a higher number than Judge. In fact, likely would. Yeah, and 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 that's and that's like why this isn't a perfect metric. Look how good Lindor is in the field. He's uh, almost as good as Bobby Wood Jr. as a shortstop, uh, just ahead of Ellie De La Cruz, who's a, a nice sleeper, guys. He's also got 61 stolen bases. Juan Soto's having a pretty good year on the field, too. Juan, 
Juan Soto's playing better than Judge in the outfield, as this says, and is this third best player in the league, just ahead of Lindor. Lindor's had a great year. He's been really good. That team needs to make the playoffs before we start talking about MVP, though. He is not going to win the MVP, and that war freaking statistic is bull. Okay, the fact that MLB brought that to the game it just makes me sick to my stomach. I am so sick and tired of statistics especially in baseball. What's next? What are we going to call the next statistic? SOS? I mean, seriously, give me a break. Speedy, let's create our own statistic. You ready? Well, I, I want to tell, tell Fish, one of the times we had... B-A-L. One of the times we had Ryan Spader... B-A-L-L-L-S. Okay, can I can explain to Fish something? Because Ryan Spader, when we had him on one of the uh, other times, he was mentioning how baseball actually adjusts the war, the war statistic, like oftentimes every couple of years where like it's not as it's not as leading to be accurate. Like if you're comparing something like 2018 war to 2021 or something like that, which is, which is actually kind of interesting. So you got to spit it out. Okay. You got to spit it out. It, it's hot certainly toy. not perfect. Hot speedy. Hot toy. Give me a hot toy. Can you let fish speak? Could you just say hot toy? No. Say hot toy. I'm not stooping. For some, just do it. Do I'm it. not stooping for Snapchat and TikTok. Crap. Just say hot toy. I'm just asking you to do it. No. Just do it. No. One time. Hawk no. Dewey. No. Hawk Dewey. No. Hawk Dewey. Just do it. No. I'm not Hawk catering Dewey. to those. Hawk Dewey. Come on. No. Do it. Do it. Not happening. Fish, speak. Do it. <laughs> Fish, please speak. Spit it out. I'm not catering to those people. Catering to what? I'm saying the Hawk Dewey. TikTok people. Not, screw the TikTok. I'm asking you to Hawk Dewey. Yeah. Which is a TikTok people thing. No, it's a her thing. And she made millions. So hot. Yeah, team. exactly. I'm hot not advocating team. for those people. Hot Throughout team. the first pitch at City Field. I know. And Speedy made a you know a couple of spits at her. You know? No, I didn't. You didn't, I didn't spit at her. I was not out that game. Well, well, you're spitting at something, right? What were you spitting at? Yeah, I'm spitting at the mic, telling telling you to let this talk. Okay. Say hot to No. You're you're look. a sad, disrespectful little bastard. You know that. Well, look, the, the, the Mets have gone all in on that viral craze. And look, if, if she's able to raise money for charity, which is apparently what she was doing, good for her, good for the Mets on allowing that to happen out of this crazy, nonsensical world we live in in 2024, where yeah. someone could say something like that and become super famous overnight. God bless America. All right. So what a give great us a, give us a word that'll make you famous. Give me, give me something. How about... Uh, um, give me, I, I mean, I don't make I think we could just make a mashup of Speedy's Beetle hits Jr. on the soundboard. I mean, I mean, we should we should put out that soundboard, and I think people would automatically think Speedy is a star. Give me a word, Speedy, that would really. I'm not getting on it. One word. Give me a word. That, no. That would amuse everybody. I don't know. Give me one. I give me no one idea. of your words. I don't know. These people are so ridiculous. Okay, give me one. I don't know. Why don't you ask some like 17 year old who's always on Snapchat? All right. I'll say, I want you to go finger popper. No. Do, do that. Not finger popper. Do it. I'm not advocating for that. I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you to advocate it. I'm I'll do the to... shocker again. Okay. Evolution. All right, but you got to do finger popper. No, I don't. You got to say it. Finger. I'm popper. not saying any of that. Nonsense. Say finger popper. Just do it. Why? Because they will end the show perfectly after scoops. Go ahead. Say finger popper. Finger popper. No, you got to do it with, with pizzazz. Finger popper. <laughs> uh. Finger popper. <laughs> <laughs> speedy speedy if anyone deserves to go viral it is you i don't want to be like that well she watching. made money she made lots of money yeah okay, I don't want to and think of all the good you can do for listen, I don't the want world to see listen what he'll do is he'll he'll become famous and i'll take the money <laughs> we're good we're perfect no What's wrong with that? I'm not doing it anymore. Why not? I'm not saying those anymore. You just said one. Yeah, I did. And that's it. That was great, by the way. Dead. We need that cut. It it's out, dead. That was, that dead. Was oh, look at that. You like sausages? What does that have to do with anything? I want a sausage right now. You ready? It's nothing to do with me. You want a sausage. 
That's a completely independent thought from everything else. We'll share a sausage together. You want to share it with Brittany? No. She'll share a sausage with you. No! So who do you want to share a sausage with? No one can eat their own food. But, but, but a sausage. It doesn't matter what it is. What happens if it's thick and large? It doesn't matter. Do you want to cut it in half and share it? I want you to eat your own food. <laughs> so I got to eat my own sausage, oh, even if I can't finish You're a 42 year old man. You're capable enough of eating your own food. <laughs> uh, you don't like sausages, no. It has nothing to do with that. What is it then? Eat your own food. I want to share my sausage with you. Not happening. Why not? Why can't I share my sausage with eat you? Eat your own food. Why can't you eat my sausage? I don't. Want yours? I will get my own. <laughs> you don't have your own sausage. At this current moment. <laughs> Where did it go? It never existed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, that's nice. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I know that you never had a sausage. I did. Wild. What happened to it? I ate it. <laughs> Duh. I ate it. Duh. Duh. I gotta, you gotta get that. Duh. That's so good. Duh. 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 <laughs> Things file this under things a second grader would understand. <laughs> Another one. Oh, man. You are uh, uh, fish. Uh, don't, I'd actually don't do that. But I was going to say, uh, you compare the just a simple situation uh, eating eating a sausage scenario to one of the kids. <laughs> what so are the kids? Is, what are you, what are your what are your kids? They would understand it in simple logic, not his twisted logic. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if anybody understand that. Oh. <laughs> I do like a rack of lamb. You do like that, right? Okay. Have what you ever had a rack of lamb? Yeah, but what does that have to do with anything? Where did where was your your favorite rack of lamb? My uncle cooks good ones. Good ones? Yeah, Easter. The Easter. How big is the the rack of lamb? It's pretty big. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. Do you eat the most of it? Mm, probably not. So you share your rack of lamb. It's a big piece of lamb yeah <laughs> you call, you it like you do with with other large did you see him stop he's like it's a big piece of lamb part of it like you would do with with a large steak or oh we like large stuff right do you carve out the rack oh i do well, it's not me that's you don't get do how you big share? is the rack it, you know what I'm saying? he can cook big ones does your mom cook big ones <laughs> Um, she can. My dad usually does more of the grilling, but <laughs> I love you, man. You are the best. You know that, right? Sure. You okay? I don't know. We good before we leave? I don't know. We'll let we'll let scoops finish up and no, I'm oh, good. I forgot I haven't even gone yet. <laughs> yeah, it's been about uh 20 min minutes since no, it has <laughs> It's been five minutes. Oh we yeah, go. Lindor. <laughs> Um, yeah, Francisco, and just real quick, Francisco, by the way, he has the perfect last name, Lindor. Just so Lindor, you know, you know, Lindor. you know what Lindor means in Spanish, right? I do not, I don't speak Spanish. They made me take French in high school, and I was terrible at it. <laughs> I'm just I'm asking you, all right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, just real quick, uh, Francisco Lindor is having a great year, he's having a great season, big backbone for the Mets. Uh, however, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't, you read the numbers just now, Errol. I don't know what, uh, Darlings over here is looking at, but Otani is the best or one of the best players in the league. And is really like Speedy mentioned too, he's really carrying the Dodgers through these parts of the through certain areas of the of the season. And you know, it shouldn't matter who he's playing with. He mentioned about him playing with Mookie Betts and whatnot. That shouldn't ever have to take away from what Otani's achieving and from what an actual MVP is actually doing just because of their actual teammates. So I mean, I don't know. I, I don't I don't really see Lindor over Otani in this situation here. Well, there's your answer, Speedy. You're very Lindor today. Not an adjective. Yes, it is. 
Lindor is not an adjective. It is an adjective. It is. His last name and the name of a truffle company. You're <laughs> a truffle company. <laughs> You're very Lindor. You know what that means, right? No! <laughs> it means beautiful. Do you want me to call you beautiful? No. What would you rather me call you? Ugly? You Ugly? You don't need to judge every second. What's your favorite part of the Oreo? So you don't like the cream? Oh, chocolate's a good flavor. My favorite. But 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 what what about the cream? Yeah, that's it. Do you go? Do you do you eat the chocolate before the cream? Or do you eat the cream before the chocolate? Eat them at the same time. Do you eat the cream or the chocolate first? More likely the chocolate. Why is that? Because the cream is on the inside. That's why you take the cookie and open it up. Okay. It sometimes I do that. Sometimes I don't. Speedy, you spread I don't have to do it, it every spread time. The, you spread the cookie. I know what it, the concept. I don't do it. When you time. open the cookie, Speedy, look at the camera. Do you do you go like this when you open the cookie? No. Why not? Way too much effort. Too much effort. I mean, you <laughs> twist, you twist the cookie. And you dip the cookie you in the milk. The cookie. You twist the cookie. Way too much effort. You think twisting a cookie is too much effort? Yeah. Unnecessarily like spinning it. I mean, you you hold on one second. So you would rather your dog lick your ass than does that have to do with anything? <laughs> hey, this is what I mean, putting two and two together. He people put A and B together, Arrow puts B and Z together. <laughs> like they correlate. Well, they do correlate. They don't. From who? Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the show. Uh, thank you to Chris Draft uh, for joining us. Fantastic. Pete Bursick. I know he's driving, hanging out in, you know, serial killer country. Um, thank you to our, our friend, our executive producer, Fish, for, you know, obviously all the great content and all the stuff, the graphics and posts up. Uh, thank you to Scoops for all the content, all the, uh, you know, sports minutes. Speedy, thank you for being you. As always, uh, you know, just being the... Uh, the person that really scars up the Tootsie Roll. Just so you know. Have you ever scarred up a Tootsie Roll? Again, another terminology that makes no sense. It makes a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. What, what's wrong with the Tootsie Roll? What is a scar? A scar? Well, it means a lot of things. What is a scar? What is a scar? In simplest terms. What is a scar? Don't overthink it. What is, what is, what what is, is a scar? scar? I'm what asking is... you. What is a scar? It is a permanent okay. red mark okay. on your body. Well, well, no, that's not what a scar is. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. That, that is not the definition of scar. A permanent red mark on your body. Well, yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be red. Type, but that's be... not the definition of a scar. Well, scarring happens on your body. A mark left on your skin, within the body tissue, where a wound, a burn, or a sore. Do you have any sores on your body? Okay. Now, okay. read that definition <laughs> and correlate it. What does it have to do with a freaking Tootsie Roll? <laughs> <laughs> Which has no skin. No, no skin. <laughs> I'm going to trust a medical professional. <laughs> what does it have to do with a Tootsie Roll? <laughs> oh. What does that have to do? Speedy, I can't make them fast enough for you, but I'm trying here. <laughs> Don't share a Hootang pie with the rock. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll put scars on that and think it means something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Uh, I have nothing else to say. Oh, September 5th, which is tomorrow. Come to Miller's Ale House, ladies and gentlemen. Well, guess what? Six o'clock, we will be live. At Miller's for game number one of the NFL season, Kansas City, Baltimore. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be there. We will be doing a live show over there, you know, interesting you and, and making you laugh. And hopefully Speedy will not be wearing any underwear, right? I will be wearing it. You sure? Absolutely. Clean? <laughs> Absolutely. Holes? No. Any holes in your underwear? Not the one I'll be wearing tomorrow. <laughs>
<laughs> all right uh so he's not wearing any holes in his underwears tomorrow all right ladies and gentlemen that's it for our show tomorrow mills ale house lake grove long island over here uh and at six o'clock we will be live until then it's us it's you goodbye you're, you're listening to the worldwide sports radio network